Yes, doctor, because some students ask. Can you see my snipping to step? Yeah, yes, yes, yes. Now it's, everything is clear, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, again, when we talk about uh, Portronics, so Portronics means that we are going to learn about power processor. Means that from the source, maybe it come in AC or DC, whatsoever, source, before we supply to the load, so we have to process in terms of voltage, current, power, before we deliver up to the requirement of this load. And this load, it needs maybe low voltage, maybe it needs higher frequency, maybe it needs some sort of uh, process kind of uh, power. So we have to suit it with our power processor module. So when you learn, learn about rectifiers, so it means that we are converting from AC to DC. And so this is the first part that we're going to discuss about rectifiers or AC to DC power processing. Okay, later maybe we talk about uh, from uh, previously we have AC to AC and maybe we have AC, uh, sorry, DC to DC to AC. So now it's DC to AC, uh, sorry, DC to AC inverter. Maybe from DC to DC, which is maybe we have uh, some certain uh, level of DC, but the load need only a certain level of DC. So we have to process the voltage or the power to suit the requirement of our load. Okay. Okay, out of this uh, chapter, which is uh, AC to DC, which is rectifier, what we expect you all to understand is that you understand to how the operation of the rectifiers and in the circuit, how the rectifiers operate or behave. And to understand the performance parameters of the rectifiers. Later on, you will see we have a source, AC source. We have rectifier. Before we deliver to our load, assume as pure resistor. So this is our rectifier, diode. Maybe we have some sort of other rectifiers. Okay, how the operation of this circuit and how the performance of the diode itself. Then how to analyze the circuit and what you expect to get from this output. So how to analyze the output, how you want to determine the voltage level of the output here. Then the, to learn how uh, in terms of the techniques of design the, the whole circuit here. How you want what you need to consider in terms of designing the entire circuit of this rectifier uh, module. Okay, this is your source, this is your load, this is your device. The whole of these three items consider as your system. Okay, so that's what we expect you all to understand throughout this uh, chapter. Okay, next we go to the next slide. If you have doctor, any answer, doctor, we, any we answer? can't see your slide right now. We can't yeah, see your in? We cannot see your slide right now. I just off. Okay. I see. Okay. 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 I just off and I, because I, I try to proceed with Microsoft 360, but still uh, in the process. So I have to present throughout this snip. So it's quite a hiccup. Process, huh? So we proceed one by one uh, with snipping tools for today. Huh? Sorry for the hiccup. Huh? So you can jot down on your slide, on your notes. Huh? I'm presenting through snipping tool. You can jot down on your slide, on your handouts. Can you can see my snipping tools? Yeah. Yes, yes, huh? yes, yes. Okay, thank you. Yes. Okay, as I mentioned before, AC to DC converters is a skirt to use, is a skirt used to convert from AC to DC, which is also known as rectifier. Okay, we have other kind of uh, modules as well. If we convert AC to DC, it's so-called rectifier. If AC to AC, the name is AC voltage controller, or we call it before 
a cyclo converter. We have this uh, syllabus uh, previously in our chapter, uh, in our subject, but already been taken out for this semester because this cyclo converter is uh, seldomly used right now in uh, the industry. So we have replaced with the inverter instead. Previously, we didn't learn inverter in Power Electronic 1. Maybe we'll learn in Power Electronic 2 or other subject. But we have uh, replaced with this cyclo converter with the uh, inverter. Okay, so you you will see that this uh, chapter of DC to AC, or so-called inverter, is going to be learned and discussed within this semester. Uh, if you refer to previous exam question, there will be no answer, uh, question for inverter, but this semester upwards. So you will have inverter discussed in our subject. Uh. And we have DC to DC uh, converter, or we call chopper and chopper. Okay, on the next slide, uh, you can see the types of rectifier. It's stated over there, half-wave rectifier, full-wave rectifier, uncontrolled rectifier, controlled rectifier, single-phase and three-phase rectifier. So what does it mean by half-wave and full-wave rectifier? Half wave only one diode and uh, full wave. That's mean you have to use two diode, right? Yeah, means that it will process both side of your uh, signal. Positive side. and negative will be filtered or will be processed. If half wave means that only positive part or negative part is uh, uh, processed, meanwhile another part will be voided. Okay, um, what does it mean by control and uncontrolled? Switch. Like dynamic? I dynamic range. The slide first. You move to the next slide. Sorry. One minute, one second, please. Okay, half wave means that if you have a AC, so you will, will have only one diode before it goes to your load. Means that it will process, you have here the input of full wave, but you will see that only half wave of your process signal. It rectifies, then it blocks. It rectifies, then it blocks. It rectifies and it blocks. And even though you come in the full wave of signal, only half wave is processed. Meanwhile, if full wave rectifier, so you have AC source, you will have more than one component of diodes here to compose as your full wave rectifier. So the actually the connection will be here. Come here, it goes to here. I think doctor will also we can use center tab, right? Come again. We can use center tab rectifier. And yeah. Or bridge. Mm, almost the same. But this one is for rectifier. Means that on the positive side, it goes here and it goes to the diode. On negative cycle, I... it goes here and also it go into the diode. On the positive Doctor, side. So I think I I I I think this one is clever, right? Clever. Uh, this one is rectifier. I see. This one is clipper. 
this is uncontrolled uh, module means that you cannot control the diode once it's turned on it's turned on it will turn off only on the reverse bias on the positive bias it will conduct but on a negative bias it will block so positive bias it conducts negative bias it block positive it conducts negative it blocks okay so this is half wave rectifier meanwhile this one is a full wave rectifier so it will be uh, much a big difference in terms of uh, com number of components and once it involves multiple of component it involves cost so that's why we need to consider in terms of uh, the uh, what so called uh, to justify are we going to proceed with this kind of uh, circuit if you are an engineer for a certain uh, company or are you going to proceed with this kind of circuit to sell to the market so it's up to Doctor. your justification uh. Um, Doctor, actually, because, I have a question. Yeah, come again. Louder, please. Uh, actually, for the for the for the second uh, diagram that you that you use, uh, I I think the diode must uh, must be serious with the load. If you if if uh, if you put the diode parallel with the load, it's gonna be clever, right? Uh, put it parallel I, with the load. The, the the diode must be serious with the load. The the signal never can be like this if you put the diode parallel with the load. This one we call it clever. You yeah. you, you will mine, right? This one is rectifier. Maybe some some in some books called clipper. But, but if you put the, the diode, if if you put the diode parallel with the load. The equation gonna be v uh, v bias plus zero point seven, so the signal it's never gonna be like this. The diode must be serious with the load, doctor. If I'm not mistaken. And uh, diode series with the load. This is series with the load. This one is it. If you report, you refer to the books. So this is the composition. Maybe we discuss later on the clipper point of view that you uh, said. Okay. okay. We proceed with this, this one first, because maybe the, the clipper will be touched in this kind of uncontrolled uh, control parts. Okay. 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 okay this is the composition of half wave rectifier. Meanwhile, this one is a full wave rectifier. You can refer to the notes. Okay, what about uncontrolled rectifier? And uncontrolled rectifier also refer to the, the switch. Means that we cannot control in terms of when to start or when to stop the conduction. Okay, it conducts when it the current cross the zero uh, zero level post move to the positive part so it only stop when it cross another zero going to the negative side of uh, oscillation okay it's uncontrolled but when you see some uh, some device with this kind of marking so this is so-called diode but when you see some sort of this marking so it means that you have some sort of signal that will be induced to the part so this kind of part is so-called a control device or control switch and if without this part is with so-called uncontrolled switch. So if you put the uncontrolled switch into the circuit, so it will become uncontrolled rectifier. 
if you put a controllable switch into the circuit, it will be called as control rectifier. So how to control, we'll discuss later because uh, different device, they need different kind of control signal. Okay, what we means by, uh, what it means by single phase rectifier, so this is the single source. Single phase, so this is single phase rectifier. What about three phase rectifier? A three phase rectifier is a rectifier that rectifies the three phase of our source. We have phase A, phase B, phase C going into one system, so we shall have a three phase rectifier. Okay, this is for single phase. If you have composed from a three different source of phase A, B, C, or red, yellow, blue, so it comes into your module, it goes into your load, so this is so called three phase rectifier. Okay. Okay, next slide. You can see the composition of the circuit uh, over there. Nampak je. Tak nampak. Tak nampak. Okay, wait. Okay, inside your printout slide itself, we have a composition of the circuit. So, what per I draw just now is this kind of circuit. Lah. Just that it draw over here in terms of uh, diamond kind of diamond Bridge. kind of uh, drawing you can see this is a bridge so, right wait uh, one moment please Okay, you have any question? The drawing that I uh, draw just now is just like this one. It's just that the arrangement of your diode here, D1, D2, 3, 4 here is it's arranged in diamond type. Meanwhile, I draw just not this kind of arrangement. Just the same. If you can imagine or visualize this in this kind of uh, arrangement proper so you can draw or you can visualize in this kind of uh, drawing but if you uh, prefer with this kind of drawing so it's up to you, you can draw in this kind of drawing Okay, for the uncontrolled half wave rectifier, we assume a simple resistive load. During positive half cycle of the input voltage, the diode here will conduct and the output appears across the load. So as I explained just now, when on the positive cycle, so you shall have a positive cycle here. But when it circulate or it turns into the negative cycle and first the current flows from anode to cathode and from left to the right so it flows so you can see the output but when it flows from front here right to the left so the diode will block the flow of current so there will be no negative half cycle huh? So the output voltage is zero. Okay, so this is the, uh, you have to take note that when you simulate or when you measure on the, on the scope and you use multimeter or when you use a, a measuring device, it will measure, it's up to your options. It will measure sometimes average 
as what you have performed inside your lab one. Sometimes it, it measures RMS. Sometimes it measures peak. So it's up to you and depends on the type of circuit that we are facing or we are dealing with, which values or which attributes uh, units are preferable or correct to represent our measured uh, signals. So if you probe or you simulate through a scope, you shall see that the output that appear on the scope or on the simulation is peak value. So VM here represents the peak value. So let's say if you want to present in terms of RMS, so we have to divide by set two. Okay, here VS is the RMS value equal to V peak sine omega t. Okay, this is V peak, this is RMS. Okay. So what you can see from your scope or your simulation is the peak value, <coughs> instantaneous value. Okay, this is instantaneous value. Right? At zero, t equal to zero, <coughs> so the output <coughs> is zero. Right? When it reach pi divided by two and 90 degree, so it reach peak value. And so this is your instantaneous value, this is your peak value here. Meanwhile, the overall Vm sine omega t is your RMS value. Okay. okay this is the peak uh, value of your input voltage. Meanwhile, this is your observed value output at V out here. What you measure from here, if you put a probe, so this is the signal that you will see. For the half positive cycles, you start to ramp up, then go down on the uh, half uh, cycles. Huh? 2 pi is one full cycle. So pi here is your half cycle. Ramp up and disappear here. Because when it enter the negative cycles, the diode will block the voltage and you block the voltage the current will not flow lah. so it flows positive it blocks the negative and, but when you measure on the diode itself and you can see that during uh, positive cycles the voltage drop across the diode is zero lah, because it allows current to flow so the voltage drop is zero but when the negative cycles uh, appear or negative cycles uh, happen so it blocks so it will blocks from the right to the left here so you will see that the voltage will appear on the diode itself ramp up on the negative cycles up to the negative v peak and go down to zero so appear happens continuously now for this uncontrolled half wave rectifier so this is the uh our load so if we, this is the plot of our voltage, what about the plot of current? So how the current looks like actually? So for your information, if we have a, we are going to plot the current, sorry, if we are going to plot the current, so for our load, resistive load, the phase of your, let's say this is your input, so they'll be at the same phase, and this is your input, so this is V out. The current also will follow the same pattern, which is, yeah. Once you have a flowing 
uh, voltage throughout the diode and also throughout your load so the current also will ramp up and it blocks here it's ramp up this block here okay same goes to here you can measure the current as well because whatever flows uh, sorry there is no current uh, on the reverse uh, bias there will be no current because it blocks okay there will be only current that flows on the positive cycles later when we uh, analyze on in terms of uh, rl load this is only r but if r plus l there will be a shifting of current of theta okay next So, the output voltage on the average, and the average output voltage here, it's not the, the RMS, huh? average output voltage. So, you have to take a look, uh, be alert because sometimes we measure average, sometimes we measure peak, sometimes we measure RMS. So, you have to be alert on that. Okay, the output, which is the average uh, value, because we are dealing with rectifier now. V out is considered as the output, the average value of the output, which is if you calculate in mathematic uh, values, is equal to one over full cycles of two pi here. Integrate between zero to pi, uh, because we only have half cycles. Sine omega t, d omega t. So if we solve the actually the equation, it will be only V peak divided by pi. So this is the average output of our signal for half-wave rectifier. Meanwhile, in terms of average current, how much the average current? It will be also the same. Average voltage that we calculate divided by value of R. So this is the Ohm's law, V equal to IR. So I equal to V over R. And meanwhile, your V out is Vm over pi. So you put in Vm over pi here, uh, times 1 over R. So you become Vm over pi R. So this is the average current. What are average power absorbed by the resistor? And so P is equal to I R, I square R, sorry. This is power equation, V, uh, P equal to I square R, P equal to V square over R, or P equal to V I. And Sweet. So this is your average. This is your average as well. So this is your uh, peak. So this is your Ohm's law, V equal to IR. So if you want to find I, so it's equal to V over R. So V is your, if you are, this is your I naught, so this is your, your V naught. And, or you have to insert the initial uh, values is now, which is Vm over pi times 1 over r. So it become Vm over pi r. Okay, meanwhile your power equation is P equal to Vi, P equal to I square r, 
P equals so to V square over R. So depends on which place or which event you want to use. Usually this one we use for losses, how to calculate losses. This one is the power, output or consume power. This one is the power losses on the certain device. So the power absorbed by the resistor, how much absorbed by the resistor? If we acknowledge or we know how much the current that flows through that resistor, how much the current flows, so we can use, we know the, the, the value of R, we know how much the current that flows through, so you can use I square R. Or we know the how much the voltage drop through the resistor, and so we can use V square over R. And so it's up to the condition and situation where and what kind of data that available at that time. So this is the power equation that you are able to select and use. Huh? Okay, uh, but in terms of RMS, VRMS is equal to V m just now divided by 2 for this uh, half wave rectifier so i rms is equal to vm over to r nah? and i is you include again the ohms uh, equation here here to the equation so you will get uh, the absorbed power of the resistor so absorbed power resistor you have to bear in mind that the value is to be RMS and RMS. If you go to the example, so Started there for half wave rectifier circuit. The source is sinusoidal. 240 volt frequency of 50 hertz. So bear in mind that the when we talk about half wave rectifier, so it does not does not uh, also call uh, effect by how much the frequency is. So far lah. So set here RMS and so. V in is 240 volt RMS. Meanwhile, your load is 5 ohm. The load resistor is 5 ohm. So determine the average load current. So what is your I up and load current? How much is your I up? So you start with the I R is equal to V R divided by R. V R divided by R. But your V R is V average, which is equal to one over two pi. Uh, plus, uh, sorry, 1 over 2 pi of the equations. Huh? But it's end up with the Vm over pi. And Vr is your V average, which is Vm over pi. So you put in your Vm over pi here. So I, I out will become Vm over by R. By R. Mm. So this is your 
IR. So VM, this is VRMS. Okay. So you have to times set two. Set two times 240 volt RMS divided by pi five. So you will get how much? Your IR. 21.6 is it? Yeah, 21.6 equal 18 yeah so, so 2 240 divided by pi so this pi is 3.142 and so you have to ensure that if your calculator set to uh, correct unit so it should be 31.142 lah. and um, if I'm not, not mistaken this is in radian Okay, we become to 21.6. So this is the average load current. What about the average power absorbed by the load? So this is your A. So average power. How much is your average power? So P average is equal to I square R. And so you have your I. So this is your I, your times your R, or you can divide, or you can get your, uh, calculate your uh, VRMS here, divide by R, also can. So P average Go to I square R or equal to V square divided by R. So you can use any uh, values. So let's say if you want to find from I RMS, so I RMS 21.6 square times 5. Wait, I want to check again the answers here.
sorry guys uh, okay this is your average okay this is IR average it's not RMS values so you cannot use directly this 21.6 ampere here you have to uh, to get the average power you have to convert from average into RMS okay so I RMS is equal to V RMS divided by R or VM divided by to R So if you're taking this one, so your I RMS is equal to Vm divided by 2R. So your V max is 2, 2, 4, 0. which is much you get uh, 21.6 21.6 your average I, I I think sir didn't put the buy come again uh, uh, 340 divided by by times 5 divide by 5 divide, uh, divide by by times 5 uh, divide by pi times 5 yes so you get 21.64 this is the output output current okay let's say we are taking a v out rms divided by two but dr so 340 you 340 you uh, you get it from where hmm. they quite confusing on my notes here Okay, never mind. I will discuss the one on the uh, offline uh, lecture later on. Okay, okay. Okay, we proceed with the notes first. We shall keep this this example because I need to check again my notes here. Okay, okay Example sir. and tutorial, I will keep. Uh, it will take some time. So we proceed on the page 15, control halfway rectifier because we have another half an hour to go. Okay. Okay. Okay, okay. Because we have to uh, take note, differentiate between input and output. The given here is the input voltage, and the two hundred forty volt is the input voltage. I remember. Okay, I discussed in the pre-recorded letter on that uh, exercise and tutorial so proceed to page 15 sorry i think the uh, the the tutorial here the most of the answer is correct you try first, I'll check and upload the discussion later on the uh, Google Classroom. 
Okay, now we'll proceed with 15, page 15 first. Okay, as I mentioned to you, when we have this kind of uh, uh, device which have a switch marking on the cathode side, so it's so called a control device. Okay, wait. Uh. So this is so called gate. If we have diode or power device, it have included the marking here. So this is the gate actually. So what we use for this part is to induce signal to the power switch or the diode here. So it's not normal called diode. Lah. It's a silicon control rectifier. And silicon or signal control rectifier. No? Thyristor. Or the is short the short name will be a thyristor, which is used to control the output of the rectifier. So the SCR only we conduct when the source becomes positive, but the conduction is delayed until the gate signal applied. And so means that if you put a positive bias throughout your your device here, so during positive cycle, what happens that you have a positive bias? Okay, but this device will not conduct until you put signal onto the gate. You put a pulse and you put a pulse. Some uh, device is controlled by current. Uh, some device controlled by voltage. Let's say you put a current pulses. <clears throat> put a current pulses, certain milliampere to the gate. So only at this time, let's say this is your alpha. After zero, uh, draw here. After positive cycle, certain times, only you apply alpha and you apply your signal, alpha, alpha here, then only the device will conduct. And you have positive cycle of input, but you apply alpha at this point. At this point you apply, only you can see that the output is appear at your load. And this is your input. This is the point of your alpha. So this is your output that you can see from your load from here. If you take a look from here or you probe it from here. So this is your output waveform. Okay, it will trigger during alpha. But it will switch off once the cycle enter negative portion positive cycles negative cycles means that during positive cycle it conducts after alpha but when the circuit moving into negative cycles so you stop lah. it behave like diode positive cycles behave like SCR negative cycle just behave like diode so it will not conduct during or under negative cycle. Okay, so that's the behavior of SCR, silicon control or signal control rectifier. Okay, any question? So, uh, 
you provide some sort of uh, gate controls uh, circuit to apply or to produce IG uh, current for the gate to operate. So in our simulation in PSIM, the gate control or signal is just generated by the signal generator, simple signal generator. But in uh, real life, you have to compose a circuit in terms of how to uh, supply this gate uh, to operate. So it depends. Different SCR, they have different voltage rating, they have different current rating, and they have different current range value for your gate. And the controlling gate, they need different kind of current value. So it's up to the requirement of the circuit and the requirement of the device. So you yourself have to determine. And so in your later parts or in future uh, discussion, we shall see in terms of how much the voltage need to be generated here, how much the current you need for your load. So it will depend. It will be uh, the parameters for you all to select what kind of switch here and what kind of switch, uh, power rating, current rating, voltage rating of the switch to be selected on your, or uh, to be applied to your system and how you want to, uh, what kind of control or signal, uh, current intensity, voltage rating that you need to compose for your circuit or for your device. Mm. And it depends also on the, the rating or range of your source. So three parts that you have to consider I think four, but this one is not so much be impressed on. But these three parts need to be considered on this power processor or power processing uh, consideration. Okay, if you can see from uh, this slide, it shows here the input of your signal. V source here have full cycles, but what you can see from uh, resistive uh, point of view, the load. It just conduct during alpha and off on the negative cycle. And it repeats again on the another alpha. Means that each cycle you have to pass the alpha. And you have to put the alpha here, alpha 1, alpha 2, alpha 3. So each cycle you have to induce or you have to uh, produce the signal into the gate. And so it, now it depends on the cycles huh? and how much the cycle if it still hertz. So the duration it follows it still hertz cycles. Huh? If 50 hertz, so 50 hertz. Huh? If more than that, kilohertz. So the signal also be in kilohertz uh, cycles. So in terms of uh, when you measure or you probe at the uh, device itself, so this is the signal that you can see lah, when it blocks, it has <coughs> voltage and go to zero. When it blocks, it has voltage go to zero and it has tails here because this part, it blocks the voltage. So the half-wave control rectifier output is given by uh, this one. V up is normal Vm over 2 pi but you have to plus uh, the amount of 1 plus cos alpha. And you have to determine how, how much the alpha. So the higher the alpha, it means that the lower the V up. You can see lower the alpha, you will have higher V up. But when you increase the alpha, so the output will, average voltage will be reduced. And the higher the alpha, the lower the V out. In terms of average, average power absorbed by the resistor, also the same, V square over R, V out here. This is V out, V RMS out, divided by R. Or I square R. I is the amount of your uh, absorbed current RMS to the load times 
the value of resistive uh, amount. And your VRMS is equal to VM divided by 2 times 1 minus alpha divided by pi sine 2 alpha divided by 3 pi. And actually, all the uh, iteration here will be done, and I'll share with you all the PE curve that we generate for you all to refer. How much actually the output in terms of voltage, RMS, average, be out? Because we are not focusing on how you want to uh, remember and calculate. And we need you all to appreciate in terms of if you shift to certain point, what you expect to happen, and the value we can just plot from the graph, graph that we will share. I should share before, but I forgot. I will share later on the PE curve. So this is an example I discussed later in this, this one. So now we have come to the conclusion. We have learned about uncontrolled half-wave rectifier and also control half-wave rectifier with resistive load. Okay, any question from the floor? Ada sebarang soalan? I'm searching for the graph that I should share with you. So this uh, afternoon session will be labs. Lab hour we start at twelve. So we we'll attend. I will attend on the first ten or fifteen minutes. Give you a briefing, and I will leave you all to the labs. Okay, wait. I want to show you all the graph. 